Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, probably sponsored by CoolSomething.com, Mana Traders, as well as Twitch subs and Patreon supporters just like you. My name is Evan Irwin, and get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Power Dragon. What's up, everybody? And I think I have to just greet you with my best John Coffee, because I'm tired, boss. <laughs> it's been, been one of them days. <laughs> been that all day. Uh, and now we're going to make him talk about his full day. Right. Uh, Root yeah. Wrestler. Hey, y'all. How's it going? We're we're doing this the root podcast you ever seen, y'all. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And I got the the southern droll right behind it. So uh that said, if you missed our pre-show, patrons and subs to this channel can access that extended version early. And with that, we kick it off with our first pick and our code push for coolstuffing.com. Go to coolstuffing.com, use the promo code magic mics. It's super important. If you like this podcast, I promise now's the time to go make an order. Save some money. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, and tell them we sent you. That would be great. We also support our favorite streamer on Twitch with your suggestions at the end of the show to see who we raid tonight. All thanks to CoolStuffInc.com, who has cool stuff in stock right there on the screen for you. All right. So uh, the first pick, uh, I know I know you're tired, Power Dragon. You've been <laughs> here. I know you've been through it. I know you've been playing all day. But we have to know, what do you think about Outlaws of Thunder Junction? Uh, man, it's as crazy as we all thought it was like, absolutely. There was all types of weird two and three card combo -y type situations. I mean, I even did stuff with like bristling bill and Kodama. So like you play a land, it gets a counter, you play Kodama, you attack, you get a mm -hmm. land, you put a counter on a thing like, and then the game was over like the next turn. Like, right. I mean, like it's some ridiculous stuff that's happening right now. And like, I think one of the things we talked about the pre-show is like, I realized there's a point during one of the games where I have a spree, but like you're afraid to tap mana because there's so many good sprees that are instant. And once your opponent has like six, seven mana, you're just like, I don't know what's about to happen if I tap out right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like right? this is the scariest moment I've ever had in Magic where like, I really need to do something, but I don't know if I safely can even do the smallest version of this thing right now. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so scary. Because That's interesting. Sprees are instants. Like, so you have that on top of all the normal spells that you're already worried about. So, like, there were so many times where somebody would go to, like, try to start comboing or, like, maybe play a Planeswalker and do a thing. And you're like, all right, cool. You know, it literally one turn, I just went, oh, sweet. They're going to tap out. I guess I'm just going to smuggle a surprise and play a Terror of the Peaks and, uh, what's his name? Yard Tony Yardle. Yardle. Yeah. And just blast them for 18. And that was game. Like, I mean, like, that's literally Yo, what happened. Like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you both got you just over. both got shotguns aimed at your head. Did it feel yeah. like did it feel like no one could do anything? Was it just a standoff? Which I no, guess is like kind you're, of Western you're, theme. you're doing like small strategic things. Mm. You know, like, okay, I'm gonna try to build up my board. Maybe I'll just add some loyalty to my planeswalker, whatever. But you have to really line up when it's worth it to do the big thing, either out of desperation or in response to somebody else doing a thing, is Got what it. it felt like. Much more so, like a boxing match in that way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I like that. How did you feel about the plot mechanic? Plot was great, actually. I, I I think the thing about plot that was interesting was the way they designed them. Like, as you start using a few of them, you start kind of getting it, right? Like, the railway brawler, you kind of go, all right, that's a plot for four, cool. But then it's like, oh, I get this for a 5-5 five, five next turn, and I'm playing some other big 5 or 6 power thing, and now I have two giant monsters the next turn, right? This is what it's designed to do. You know, uh, the other one I was talking about too, the Trailblazer, where it comes into play, it makes some mana, and then you're able to play some other big thing because power four or greater and you get a card, right? Mm -hmm. So once you did that a couple of times, you start looking at plot a little bit differently and going like, oh, okay, I get how these are all designed to be used together. And then there was some crazy stuff with the, uh, the Nathan Stoyer card. Like oh, CJB good. got me yeah. because he was able to plot the... Uh, the time twister or whatever. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. And the time like, twister with oh, well, the plus I guess I take 10. Oh, yeah, this is how really this is go down. I like that. <laughs> Which was the most hilarious thing. Because I'm just like, yeah, I guess I'm dead. I don't know what I do with this. <laughs> yeah, the um the outcaster trailblazer adds a mana and it plots for three. And it's funny because additional Outlander Outcaster Trailblazers will trigger yep. Outcaster right. Trailblazers, which is awesome. And I just love that. Even now, even more than 30 years, we have still creative ways of paying for creatures and paying unique lesser amounts most of the times for creatures uh -huh. and payoffs for those types of lesser amounts. 
everything's kicker, but it doesn't matter when they right. keep kind of having these little flavors of different ways to do things. And plot looks just like one of those. Yeah. There's also a lot of fun ways to do things with cards that have existed or we kind of got away from. Like saying stuff like Kadama, right? But then there's also, I played a couple of experts like Storm the Festival. Because now if you can storm the festival into like, I don't know, the uh, the Elish Norn that doubles ETB triggers mm -hmm. and Terror of the Peaks. You know, like, so like that's a it. thing you can do, right? right? Which is pretty gross. Pretty scary. So there's all kinds of silly things going on right now. And it was a lot of fun, though. I mean, the downside being that there weren't that many players in it because, you yeah. know, they limited the attendance or whatever. So that kind of sucked. And you were under a bit of a time crunch, right? So because of those things, you didn't end up playing some of the people multiple times. I had some people I played like four times. I think I don't think I played anybody more than that, but several people I played multiple times. And then also the issue of I didn't take a break the whole time. I literally streamed for seven and a half hours because I'm trying to get all the footage I can get. Yeah. But, you know, if I take a break, that would have been one of like the eight hours or something I had available at that point. So it's just like, uh, that time crunch is rough because I normally do like four or five in the morning, four or five in the morning hours, right. you know, and then I'll do like another four or five in the evening and that's plenty. And I can take a break in the middle, go eat lunch, go play with the cats, whatever I want to do. But this was just like straight through. And then I literally just hard stopped, grabbed food, went and ran some errands, did as much as I could before getting back here with you guys. Man, I, I couldn't do it. I've, <laughs> I've tried. I've, I've tried to do the streaming thing. And I simply, it's too much. It's like, it, it sounds, it sounds weird. Like you're not working in the coal mines. I get it. But to be on and yeah. performing and, you know, trying to commentate yourself or have anything reasonable to say, you know, being remotely presentable, I'm barely presentable two hours a week, three hours a week, <laughs> much less eight hours a day. It's it you, you got to be you got to be trained differently. It's it's a real um, skill set. I, yeah. I think that's the hardest thing. Job. I think like a lot of things, people look and go, oh, that's really easy. I'm going to do it. I was like, well, yeah. if it was that easy to make a lot of money, don't you think like more people would do it? Like, right. I feel that way about every job. People say it's easy. I'm like, every, well, art, everybody every doing, you know, right? oh, I could paint that. All right. Do it then. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And every, I think why so, aren't you a billionaire? And I yeah. will say this, too. I felt like a little bit because of the time crunch. I don't think it was terrible, but I did catch myself like lacking the normal amount of engagement I would have with my mm -hmm. stream because I was having to focus on just like, I got to hit this kind of, right? I can't let this drag too long because I only got three hours left. Like, you know what I mean? Like I got to get this done. So like there were some times I felt, and I don't think it was, again, it wasn't terrible, but I, for me personally, it felt noticeable that I couldn't give the same top level of engagement with my audience because like. I just got to make sure the recordings are good. I get all the footage I need because literally they like, it was a hard stop at six o'clock. They gave like a five minute warning. And then the program was just like, that's it. Like, would you like to shut down the program? Like, I mean, like that was it. Right. It was just like, there was no more. So if you didn't get everything you needed, you're just SOL. Yeah, but the, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I just oh. feel like there's, you know, there, um, we, we saw this coming, right? Like this was no real surprise. I hate that we saw it coming and then it came and sure. there we are. But I also know that those are the types of growing pains that make those things better next time. And all the stories of I play the same person next time or I waited in queues for three to four minutes or whatever, you know, all those negative experiences will just kind of return us, honestly, I think more to the norm of a few sets ago when there's, you know, a 24 hour window or maybe an 18 hour window at least, yeah. you know, and they, they go through more uh, than one uh, language. For example, I know there are multiple uh, Brazilian streamers who were like, please, yeah. we have large audiences. Let us showcase the the product and they just couldn't yeah yeah and i think it's tough even for anybody both creator and viewer that have an actual nine to five work schedule that too because a lot you of literally to unless you out. use vacation yeah you know you might get off work and only have two hours at best to really interact with the the whole event right so that's not really good either honestly especially if you're already limiting the number of people because some number of them will not be able to use their vacation days so they're not even going to be active, you know? So I want to go back to the, I mean, all of this is great inside baseball and great for those of us who make content, but I want to go back to the set also. Sure. Yeah. Which is, I had a couple questions about the set. First of all, you said that there's a new insignia for reach. Yeah. So uh, speaking of when I played Kadama, which was like in the first deck I played of the day, I was surprised because normally that reach icon you get, that's a little bow. 
it, there's a giant one of those over your card that's like in this like purplish glow mm. or whatever, which freaked me out because I literally was like, guys, what the hell is this? Like, I'm like, did something because my thought was like, what did some new card like enchant my card? Like, what's right. happening right now? Right. But no, it's just one of the visual upgrades they added to it, which I had a running gag awesome. on my channel of just secret reach where like your opponent just forget creatures on the ground can block things and they just kind of yeah. threw right into them and so i joke about oh they ran into secret reach well, it sucks to be you we're not gonna get anybody with secret reach anymore i'm a little bit disappointed <laughs> right like, i lost a bit <laughs> yeah that, that four or five reach that taps to deal two damage yeah, coming exactly. from that set yeah yeah you know if you if you needed to rely on that um, oh, of course. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> Listen, have to I'm going to use you know. that's the pen oh, no, no. trick of arena. Evan. I'm not I'm upset about it until now. From a strategic right. standpoint, I'm more upset about it because I lost a bit. That's what right. I'm exactly. About, like. <laughs> so, go, so also, I wanted to ask how Spree felt in the arena client because that's a lot oh, of like clicking and you know, real talk. It was cleaner than anything else we've had like that before. Really? Like, okay. you know, how like... Awesome. Because one of my biggest issues was like, if you had Adventure or one of the other ones, like the creature side is never always on the same side. Yeah. So like, or you have multiple choices and it just be like, there's no rhyme or reason each set, what gets to be where. And I, that, I've that i misclicked multiple times. So like, oh, yeah, obviously the creature side's on the right side. Right. And it's like, nope, it's mutate. It's on the left side or whatever, right? Yeah. This time what they did is you get your three choices or two choices, whatever it is, however many. Mm -hmm. But then below it, whichever one you highlight, it just has a bar that tells you total mana you're going to spend. Nice. So okay. you click on it, it highlights like you want to spend five mana or six mana. So each one you click, it gives you the final total, and then you can click the button, which is actually a pretty cool way to do that. Nice. nice. And plot. When you plot something, it goes to the exile zone? It goes to the exile zone with a giant fireball flare trail behind. <laughs> I okay. don't know why. Sure. It, why? Like, it literally weird. makes a sound. It's like it makes a small sound, but it literally just like like goes over it the should, other side with like this fire like a shovel, right? Like a little yeah, shovel. shovel. Exactly, exactly what I was gonna say. Just yeah, shovel, you would think like so, right? Yeah. Or or even Fate like claim. I don't know a gold coin trail or something yeah, to make more sure. sense. Like. Yeah. It's just weird that it was like a fireball. Yeah. You'll see when you get in there, like, I don't know if they're going to change it between now and then. But if you watch the footage from people that played and plot stuff, it's a it's a weird thing. I don't know why it exists. But yeah, plot I have a feeling, works how you would expect. Though. You know, nice, you're, good. you're in the room and you're talking about like, you know, how you want this thing to happen. I think happen. And we're like, okay, for plot, can we do this shovel thing or, or this gold coin thing? And you're like, nope, we're out of time. Best you can do. Blow it's something flames. up. Right, yeah, you can do a fire fireball, plus. right? Like, like, what? Cool. I'd rather have fireball than nothing. Than nothing. So, yeah. It was it was just I really weird the first time I did it because it was so sudden. Yeah. Because like you're like, oh, okay, I'll just play it, pay the plot cost or whatever. And then it just like rips over to the other side. And you're yeah, with this little fire trail, you're like, what? What was that? Plotting? That that was that, yeah. that's plotting? <laughs> Look, it was man. a little a little bit jarring the first time when you don't know what you're supposed to be getting. But I, I otherwise. Recognize... Yeah, I mechanic was easy to use. I recognize that there's that pull of I want there to be that creativity, but deadlines exist, right? Yeah, sure. of, course. of course, sucks, but okay. Well, that's well, awesome. I'm, I'm glad, glad you had a good time. time. Yeah, and I'm 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 thank you for sh for showing up. Yeah, honestly, oh, the the gameplay was fine, right? Like nothing like like everything was ridiculous. You know, there was a couple of cards that underperform, a couple of cards that overperform, whatever. But generally, things were what we thought they were. Right, which was pretty cool. And Great. So, uh, almost all of the important cards, I think, in the set show up at some point. Except for loot. I didn't see loot at all, I don't think. But most of the other things I think I saw somewhere along the way. So people were trying a lot of different stuff. Most, if I would say any of the negative stuff, was just process things that we knew were going to be a problem. So, you know, can't really do much about that. That's fine. That's good news. Hey, yeah. that's, that's not bad news. So and that's good. To my knowledge... There were no bugs. All the cards worked the way you thought they worked, as far as Amazing. I could tell. So that was cool. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, loot is such a weird card. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. I think just on cuteness and slash mythic rarities, why it's so expensive mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, it looks like a League of Legends character. It was designed. Yeah, by my, they're trying my correlation to... for that is it's our version of the Porgs. Yes, yeah. they're, they're the trying Star Wars uh, series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm fine. Guarantee with you, listen. there's going to be dice bags. There's going to be little they're, purses. I'm fine with that. Whatever. Awesome. Yeah. Look, yeah. they're trying to mass produce something that they can sell plushies of. I'm yeah. all about it. 
I think that that's great and adorable. It's a story that Magic hasn't told before. So, like, if they want to tell a cute animal adventure story for the next several sets, I'm fine with that. Uh, I think that's interesting. So, let's, you know, we got some Moe, yeah, sure. and Cub story yeah. coming out with Jason Frasca and Loot going on some yeah. sort of adventure. I think that's cool. And for those, you know, who want to know the, the sort of business side of things, uh, OTJ is killing it. Uh, OTJ is causing reorders at a distributor level that we have not done in many sets at cool okay. stuff. Like, just there's period. zero. I like, honestly, like I said, after the second day of previews, I remember telling people there's no way this set doesn't sell well. Like, at that point, we'd seen like 10% of the set. And I was like, it yeah. doesn't even matter what the rest of it is. Like, it no, literally did not yeah. matter. The cards themselves are cool, unique. The mythics are worth more. The bonus sheets just, like, just knock it into a whole different realm. When you look at Murders, yeah. who is just looking like the, the red and stepchild already of the year. Can you give me a comparison to a previous set on numbers? Is it killing it as good as, for example, killing it like Dominaria did? Or is it more along the lines of, like, a, I mean, I don't even know what's a middle-of-the-road set. I bet it's beating Murders. Dominaria. Uh, all time? Yeah, I mean, like, it, it depends. Um, you know, everything is kind of relative. Uh, it's sure. their Neon Dynasty or whatever, a few things. Right. It. But it is more, it is remarkably better than MKM to the point where we've been placing orders that we haven't had to in, like, six months. Like, it's been that long since we've had sets that were that successful yeah. um, without thinking of exact set-to-set -set comparisons. Sure. I will also say this for the set. It's not this is probably the most... I'm trying to check myself before I say this, but I think this is accurate. Mm -hmm. It's it feels like the most rares and uncommons that are playable in a set for constructed in a very long time. It's been a short, yeah. like I mean, across having, the board. Having and 50 every color. extra mythics will help that, but yeah, yeah I'm saying the mythics true. are almost all good. Like I mean, oh, like the mythics, just like, the rares. Oh, yeah, I'm saying I'm yeah. saying rares and uncommons. I saw okay. a lot of cool. different ones popping up doing work in this set. Yeah, there's some really good ones, and there's some rares that are over like ten bucks and things, and those mm -hmm. those are super important because right now, like for example, right now the bust math on a box is like stupid. It's like two. Oh, it's got to be absurd. Two hundred thirty dollars yeah. or something like at bust. Well, because you get any other random. If you get two random mythics, you might have sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I mean, seriously. So like the picture <laughs> box game with the prop is gonna be really interesting. It's, it's gonna be great. Yeah, but you know, again, is that going to last? Interesting. Probably not. But sure, the sure. Hype is there. Sure. People are digging it. The set looks cool. The cards I love seem cowboys. Neat. Everything from the preview stream seems to be like hot fire, and that's great. I, I think that. to your point, Ruben, that's a big deal, though. I think people also like the theme. Like it's easy to yeah. understand. It's easy to grasp. Mm -hmm. People like the cowboy stuff. Some of us have made content dressing up and being stupid and whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like it. It just feeds itself to a point when you get the theme right. Yep. Yeah. The um. The, the the success of the set is great. No, it's not LOTR. No, it's not Kamigawa. But uh, Modern Horizons three will be the real contender for those two sets sure. because I mean it's got the it's got the dollars. It's going to have the best rates and yada yada yada. Also, older format players that need the cards haven't had to buy the standard set stuff. Right, they can pick up some singles, but you probably got to buy boosters or boxes of MH three in a lot of yeah. cases. Yeah. True. All right, so uh, let's move on out of here. From the first pick, let me get my doc pulled up here. Uh, and to gather the townsfolk, thanks to our sponsor, Mana Traders. Enhance your online, your magic online experience. Use the code MagicMikes underscore 8 in 4, 8 negative 4 for 10% off your next subscription with Mana Traders and tell them we sent you. We appreciate it. Y'all are great. Uh, but yeah, gather the townsfolk, talk about some community stuff. And the community stuff that really wowed me this week uh, was almost certainly the secret layers, um, which, by the way, multiple, as I understand, have already sold out, uh, which is, you know, unfortunate. But uh, either way, uh, there are some really cool and unique uh, secret layer stuff going on here. Firstly, this weird rainbow foil promo of Big Noble Hierarch, I don't really understand. Um, the card text is actually in here somewhere, which is also kind of insane. Oh, like, that's a normal hierarch? That's an ignoble. Ignoble hierarch. That's the goblin that taps for giant. I man. literally glanced at that. I thought that said like Terra Crux or some BS. Yeah. Dude, like, I'm not <laughs> even was. joking. I literally just casually looked at that and I'm like, all right, that's some card I probably don't It's need. it's pretty 
It's nothing. It's I, yeah. This is pretty uh, off just, the. I just it's a hot mess, and it's fine. It's pretty out of my pocket. pocket. It's gonna be worth a lot of money. It almost looks like a garbage pail kid. Yeah. Ooh. It yeah. Looks yeah. From forever ago. Right. And I mean, hell yeah. I, and then we'll see this later on. You know, I definitely appreciate it when Wizards goes, just do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Man, can they make a garbage pail kid secret layer? That'd be so sick. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe like a hair. scavenging ooze that looks like a garbage. I don't pail even know kid. who owns that license right now. Somebody gave me those. Yeah, but they, you know, they have some some fallouts here or some fallout secret layers, which yeah. are super rad. I thought that was super. The selections cool. for those seem pretty good. They're pretty decent, right? Decent, and what they can do, which is fine. The special is really cool, which I think sold out pretty quickly. Um, also, because it includes seven cards, uh, which is yeah. nice. <clears throat> but um, look at Phoebe Wall here. Look at these designs they are just truly i've never in yeah it, playing magic since 1994 or 96 rather i've never seen anything like this like on a magic card it's truly unique it's it's right up there with that faithless looting in terms of like wow this is you don't get art like this on magic mm -hmm. cards it's incredible me, these sort of remind me of some paintings and things i saw in like south texas north mexico type thing not the same colors Mm -hmm. But that style of art that you see kind of pop up in some like markets and things. So it's it actually pretty cool to see that. I mean, I love it. Even when it falls short, even when it's not for me, I sure. love it when magic does weird stuff. Right. Anytime magic goes outside of their norm. I like traditional fantasy art. I like the normal. You look at a magic card and you're like, that's a magic card. And I like a magic card. But within you also get, you know, this cool... And, and in particular for me, I am drawn to this sort of like children's book, mm -hmm. um, kind of mythological almost. I mean, that's exactly uh, what they do is they illustrate yeah. children's books. Yeah, so. I love that. I think that that's great. I think it's beautiful. The other thing I think that's cool too is because there are artists that just don't do the traditional style, yeah. right? And, but they happen to be magic fans or they have a connection to it in some way. And like, this is an opportunity for some of them to like, okay, cool. Maybe I only get to do five pieces of art ever. But I get to do a thing for magic. But it's an and advertise. Pretty cool, exactly. You know? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Um, down here, the diabolical dioramas. A diorama. Dude, is a the, magic these card? are the weirdest. These Bruh. are so strange. The orange. Yeah. Is <laughs> I, I saw these. Wild. And I felt it's, like if, if you're a fan of like Tim Burton, yeah. Beetlejuice, you know, whatever, these are probably your jam. Right. There were some hype videos on the Twitter. I heard about that. I didn't get to see them, these. But I, I heard about them. They're really yeah. And they are so right. why they feel like a fever dream. They do. Like these <laughs> again, these are not for me, but boy, do they make me hyped. Dude, yeah, that orange shards is just the hottest fire. I swear to God, weird. The orange shards to me is probably the best one. I'm Sorry, that's lie. my f bomb for the year. Oh, these God. are just so weird. It's so good. Um, yeah, the feed I, think, yeah, I don't know. If I want these in my deck, but I'm, it's cool that I know somebody will appreciate these. Like, I know people into that style that will probably think these are amazing. Right. This and Fiend Artisan is what I want in my yard at Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's Laura Plansker, if I, if I read yeah. that right. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where, you know, someone says it maybe looks like a joke, but that's, there is, you know, method behind the madness. This is not easy to do. These are very yeah. unique pieces. Uh, tons of interesting stuff is going on with them. The three-eyed cat hanging from the chandelier. You just don't yeah, get I think that that's everywhere. What's me. Like, I don't know what this has to do with aura shards, but just like don't swinging ever. around in the room, having a party. Just, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> I think it's incredible. Uh, yeah, look at these from uh, Ravina Kai, these tarot versions of cards. The tarot ones yeah, are right dead crazy. center. Oh, yeah. Those are so gorgeous. I think some of them have already sold out at this point, including you know what? tarot's. But like, I man. wish these would have come out with like Wilds of Eldraine. Mm. Yeah, agreed. I think it would have been very appropriate. Like, I want 23 perfect. of these. I want the full major tarot. Yeah, oh, these are cool. Yeah, it's it's super duper rad. And, you know, this, like, we don't always go over every secret layer whenever they mention them. Um, but, like, when they do something really, really cool, really, really unique, the art director, whomever that was, God bless you, you killed it. Great job. I don't know what yes. to say. Like, great job. Uh, and from what we can tell, they've been selling great. Uh, arguably, at this point, like, I think some sold out in, like, 24 hours. And then people are like, hey, or less. And they're like, hey, could you not put a... You know, print run that low. Like we get that it can be low, but damn, y'all. Um, and this is the, you know, this is the gnashing teeth of if they let it go for a month, it's usually too long. 
But if you're just like, we're going to make 5,000, good luck. You know, it's probably not going to be enough because the FOMO hits and then they sell it immediately and you're stuck. And then these things are worth like too much, whatever that's supposed sure. to be. Yeah, uh, just the only stuff left looks to be all limited stock. Every like, and that's only a handful of them, like five. Mm -hmm. All the others, most of the foils all sold out. All gone. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole thing. So uh, I appreciate them bringing back so much of the FOMO, but I think there's a middle ground yeah. where you need to be okay with some amount. Like if things go completely nuts like this, you're okay saying like, look, you know, we're going to say we, we've sold out of our initial, we'll give you three days. We'll give you something and some amount of time to say, we'll sell additional ones until X, Y date, you know, come and get your order. That's yeah, all. I'm way to find to, saying to, like, hey, have the first... Work thousand you'll get yours mailed normally the others after that you're gonna have to wait like two months because we got to print them or whatever sure, right five that's fine too. you know what i mean like, yeah it's whatever hell that uh commander deck took a year <laughs> at one point the right. card flipping commander deck took a year yep. to get to yeah mailed. like and that thing's still sought after oh yeah and still worth plenty of dollars uh which is great um so the uh the arena announcements came out uh as they do and one thing was, A, they talked about, you know, the uh, the streaming event, but they also talked about the historic band list update. Mm -hmm. They are pre-banning Force of Vigor, Commandeer, Reanimate, and Mana Train. Mana Train, yeah. I expected. Yeah. Reanimate, arguably, yes. Yeah. Commandeer and Force of Vigor. Really? It's interesting. It's interesting that they're, I mean, they're free spells. They're free spells. So, so that was the whole thing. It's, so that was the whole thing is that they don't, they want to preempt free spells. Right. I, I can recall formats in which Commandeer was very good. And yeah. so, w and when that card is good, it's kind of miserable mm -hmm. um, because you're three for one in yourself. Like in Legacy, two for one in yourself is the name of the game because the card quality is so high. Sure. If Commandeer is good, that means that the card quality in the format is so high that three for one in yourself is worth it. I kind of hate that. So, like, I'm fine with that not existing. I'd rather just have a bunch of shotguns pointed at each other. So I'm okay with both of the And the same with Force of Vigor. That's a two for two, effectively. But it's also going to, you know, keep uh, a lot of decks that have some interesting potential uh, out of the format. So I'm fine with both of those free spots. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like, to me, Force of Rigor was the only one I sort of questioned. But if it does hinder too many decks in the format because it's just free to get rid of artifacts and enchantments or whatever, yeah. eh, I get it. Look, man, I don't. it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go be him timeless. I'm going to yeah. go play with my mana drains. Well, sure, I obviously. I'm going to play all the silly <laughs> crap. I love it. I turn one Dark Ritual Necropotence all the time, and it's yeah. amazing. And I love I would have it. Liked to have, I would have liked to have gotten to play with Reanimate in that format, but I understand why they didn't let us have it. I'll be playing with Reanimate in Timeless. In Timeless, with yes, show of course. And tell, which has apparently been killing it. Yeah, Show and Tell is a problem in and, that. Yeah, they're basically I thought saying that was going to be on the ban list, but right. Yeah, well, they're not. right. They're still on considered restricting, which is great because Timeless restricts just like Vintage. Right. Restricting Show and Tell, but they expect Timeless to change a lot. Because Outlaws, sure. because Modern Horizons 3. When Modern Horizons 3 comes out, I would like okay. to see them lift the ban on Force of Vigor and just let all the elementals yeah. mm. do their thing in Historic. Okay. But regardless, obviously we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought that was really interesting. And again, just makes me that much more excited yeah, for worth like, noting. Path to Exiles coming to Historic. That's still going to be huge. You know, lots of exciting stuff uh, this year in total. Um, so Magic Online has been kind of killing it recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've had so many really cool, positive announcements. And I wanted to point out one in particular, uh, amongst a whole bunch of them. Uh, they were talking about improving like the new player experience and so on. But one of the things that they debuted, I'll bring up on screen here, uh, is the Commander Workshop. This is 2,000 cards on Magic Online for $39. And it's something like it's 96% rares and mythics. Uh, 375 cards that can serve as a commander, over 40 planeswalkers, over 120 sets are in there. If you do the value, like, you know, if you go look up the value or whatever uh, on aggregators, it, its value is somewhere like 36 and a half tickets or something. But if you say to yourself, I'll pay, you know, two and a half dollars for you to just give me all of those cards and I don't have to go to every bot ever trying to get every single card ever or go through a vendor and do the trade thing and blah, 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 blah versus like, Chiching, open thing, thousands of cards are in my account. 
I thought this was brilliant. This is a great way for people to get over that weird like barrier of I just don't have the collection. I don't mm-hmm. want to do the mana traders thing or go do the buying stuff off of other websites. Just let me buy it directly and let me build my decks. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, there was a lot of doom and gloom and there has been a lot of doom and gloom since we started the show. It's true. Since forever uh, about Magic the Gathering online digital objects. And uh, they've been absolutely, we've had nothing but good things to say about Magic Online for a year. Past for s- yeah. six months. Almost I mean, for a long time. Yeah. Every new announcement. Like there was a while in the show where it was like, man, Magic Online is kind of screwing the pooch on this one. Nah, man, it's been killing it. There've been there've been nothing but dingers for probably a year. And, you know, and maybe some of this is because they outsourced some of the work yeah. on it, right? Yep. You know, where you say, hey, for sure, we got a whole other development crew. We have some other people helping with some of the customer service on it. Like it's taken some of the weight off, so we can focus on maybe developing a couple things, and they're handling some of the other work. And this is kind of the benefit, right? Why companies do what they do, right? Once you get to a certain scale. It's hard to do everything in house unless you're just going to spend a bunch of money and bring a whole bunch more people in. It's like the decision seems to be a right one, and people that play on Magic Online are benefiting. Yeah, Daybreak is the uh, the company that's yeah. taking care of it now, and they are doing a great job. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, the, good job, Daybreak. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while there'll be some problems or errors, but they do their best to get it back up and running to get people compensated to stop people from abusing the program, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, which you is know, great. I'm thinking about these two thousand cards, and realistically. Some of these, if you just bought like four sets, you have like play sets of a lot of really good stuff in this pile of things, it looks like. Mm-hmm. like so that could just be worth it. Like, it's uh, yeah, one of those things where it's like, I recognize they didn't want to like hurt the value in the economy as it existed. So it's just mm-hmm. a hair above, but it's really not that far above. We're talking less than, you know, what, about 5% higher than what you pay otherwise? Yeah. Right. Okay. Like, but dude, but this has like, Painlands, Abrupt Decays, like there's actually like real cards that people just play that if you don't own, go in and drop in what, 160 bucks or whatever? Yeah, man. And cool. You have, and you can sell them back later. That's the number one yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Cool, is you can get that money out of the program in ways you cannot do it with Arena. When I put money into Arena, that goes into a hole and it'll never come back to me. Mm-hmm. It's gone forever. Like no matter what happens to my account, whether I try to sell it, which is dangerous because it violates terms of use and yada yada. You know, that's that's question mark. But with Magic Online, you can sell these things for real dollars, and that's awesome. Yeah, this yeah. is a good list of cards. I'm, like, scrolling through. There's a lot of goodies in there. All right. And we wanted to uh, throw out some congratulations to two big community members here, this being uh, Ross Merriam as well as uh, Emma Partlow, who yeah. got uh, engaged, or they got married, rather. Uh, they yeah. were just engaged. Engaged and married. No, they've been, yeah. 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 They've so, been engaged for a while. There you go. So they have been... Uh, there and uh they when she was in Roanoke last month they got married which is awesome amazing make it easier for her to immigrate here which is also cool uh so congratulations to those guys yeah uh, good I mean, I'm, yeah good for them They're, they've both been pillars of this community for such a long time uh you know fans of of video content are going to be uh, more familiar with Ross as well as his competitive finishes but Emma uh you know content manager a TCG player commentator for magic events, you know, another big, uh, uh, member of the community. So congratulations to them. Uh, this is just, you know, just makes you feel good news. Hey, and that's awesome. Always fun stuff. And we hope they do well in the future. Uh, let's move on here to desperate ravings where things get a little ranty. Um, the best, someone that had asked at this point, what's the best selling premier set? Of all time. This would be sort of your main mm-hmm. standard releases as they try to explain for them. And that would be Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Let's go. Kamigawa. Right. I listen. It's believable. I, it's hard to fully explain how crazy man on the corner screaming I looked 10 years ago saying you yeah. got to make a Kamigawa set. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, Evan, you're out of your mind. Like, well, what are we? What, do we'd never do that. Are we insane? It everything sucks. No one liked the first one. How could we ever make it work? I'm like, serious. This was what was coming at me all those years. And it's amazing to see that. I would argue that this really, to me, wasn't even a Kamigawa set. Other than like some of the names and terms, like it just Aww. felt so differently from the old. I mean, like it felt really differently from the old ones, but it was the yeah. world, right? Yeah, the yeah. World, I mean, it was world the world inspires the mechanics, the mechanics exactly. inspire the world. Right. 
But it like, was the right translation. It was the right update yeah. to the world. You know, because we've seen some disastrous second chapters in Magic the Gathering where we are like, man, I'd really like to go back to X plane. And then we go back to X plane and it it just doesn't it doesn't have the same magic. Return is right. It's yeah, car is not high on the list. <laughs> and a we tried Ravnica a couple times and yeah. some of them have been successful and some of them hasn't. The most recent trip to Innistrad. Even arguably the second trip to Innistrad. I mean, yeah, I, I, had, I felt the second trip was worse than the third. Or, Shadows was definitely so, worse. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's there's some, you know, you have some strikes and some gutters, and you go back to a plane that didn't exactly uh, blow the doors off the first time around in terms of sales and popularity, uh, arguably, and you go back and you have the perfect update. It's the right time, the right flavor, and the right mechanics the right development, the right mix of everything. Like it was such lightning in a bottle for Neon Dynasty to get all of it that right. I don't, well, maybe, you know, to me, this is, <clears throat> you have, all right. So in entertainment, what a lot of the sort of the media moguls like to do is remakes, remakes, sequels, reboots, and so on. And that's a lot of what we saw from Wizards. You know, they go back to the planes that are, that are popular, go back to Ravnica, go back to Innistrad, and so on. Why? Because those were beloved, they sold well, we know that people like them, and so on. And when they went and they took something that was quote-unquote unlikable, quote-unquote didn't leave a good impression, but then they kill it because they have such modern tools and modern design philosophies that they've really developed, ways that they could harness the art, ways that they could harness the culture, and ways that they didn't back in 2004, they absolutely kill it. Like... To me, that says that there needs to be more people. We talked about this in the pre-show about being like sort of this, the the brave, the, you know, the bra brave uh, braveness necessary to be like, look, it sucked the first time, but how about yep. we go take something that sucked? Go take a Mercadian masks. Go take a homeland. Right. Make a new one because you know the old one sucks. You literally know why it sucks. You know yeah. what sucked about it, but you also know what little tiny pearls were in there that people enjoyed about it. People liked the culture of Kamigawa. They liked the characters of Kamigawa. They didn't like the gameplay or all the mechanics, but there was parts in there that were really good. There's parts in Mercadia mm -hmm. Mask as a merchant. Mercadia. I love Mercadia. You know, as do a something setting. with money, money changing. It's all right there. You can do it and make those things great versus saying, no, we got to run up that Ravnica hill. One more time. It's like, but it's not going to be as good as the last times, no matter how bad you want it to be. Weebos like cartoon ninjas. Like, it's, <laughs> like that's, clip it, print you know, it. Really, we, that's, that's what it is. Weebos though, right? like, love cartoon like, ninjas. Is them, right. It's accurate. It, it had the right, like you're saying, it had the right flavor. We updated things, you know, mm -hmm. some cool art lighting effects. We got some cool alternate art cards. Like, there's the all lands, kinds of things. Remember the lands? Yeah. The yeah. block. So the like, lands, man. It just to me, I th I felt the first go round, it really didn't feel like it had flavor. It was just yeah. like we we it's Japanese inspired, but yeah, you I know, mean, but they it, had it novels. Didn't, it didn't have a cohesive build. Yeah, uh, it just felt, cohesive felt so heavy handed. Yes, yeah. it was also super dense. Like the lore was so dense. Yeah. And the cards um, were bad because they were coming off of Mirrodin. And that is true. A lot of cards were not good. Yeah. So they detuned everything yeah. down, right? And so the cards you did want to like weren't that good to start with. So right. hell, some of the chase cards later end up being the stupid Myogen for, for Commander. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have, I, have a, I have another thought, which pings off of the Weeaboos Love Cartoon Ninjas, or, or mm -hmm. whatever you said. Um, right now, we have Cowboys, which are very popular. Right. Cowboys... Uh, cowboy movies, westerns, very popular. Ninja and samurai and Japanese-inspired yep. media, very popular. Is there a type of media that we have not capitalized on as magic that we could attempt to capitalize on? We're going to find I, out with the horror plane or whatever. Or the Bloomberg. I think Bloomberg. Yeah, oh, the Bloomberg is probably... I, yeah. I think both of those are, are mm. popular genres. Sure. We normally wouldn't touch for magic, but they're finding a way to work them in. Yeah. Right. Right. And we've, we're trying. I mean, the Gatewatch was their attempt at the Avengers, I think. Yeah. So I mean, can't really do superheroes. Also, Wars I'm not a super horror stuff. fan, but thinking about it, you could do some sick secret layer stuff with that if you want mm -hmm. to. Oh, yeah. If they do the right IPs. Like, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing about Bloomborough right now. We talked about this over the past few weeks. Sales for Bloomborough are happening right yeah. now. 
knowing all the the only thing we know is like maybe a couple cards, some key art, some you know, shots of art in the world. People love that stuff. Blue yeah, mm-hmm. is literally primed to be. If I'm talking toe to toe with Modern Horizons three, could be the biggest set in the year. Like wow. if they if they stick that landing, you know what I mean. And they give people all the cute furriness they want, and mm-hmm. they have the cute, the cool little like the bonus sheets that tie in or whatever. The you know the furry little planeswalkers or whatever versions, dude. If you stick that landing, I'm telling you, Bloomborough is going to be absolutely ridiculous, amazing, crazy. The concern yeah. I have for it though is that. We've got Thunder Junction, which is pretty absurd for what all the cards do. It's very good. Uh-huh. You're going to have Modern Horizons 3 that we're assuming is going to be pretty absurd for what all the cards it's do. It's bananas, yes. Yeah. And like, Bloomborough's going to have to really deliver. It is. So true. that's the concern. That's Go back to back to back. Yeah. yeah. Stick it. If they stick that landing, man, I'm telling you. It's already, it's already killing it. Killing it versus any other, like, premiere set I've seen in a long time. With wow. so little no, like with so little, you know what I'm saying? Just like you did yeah. the set, you know the theme, you know you sure. know, or two. Like that's it, man. People that's are ready awesome. for them rabbits and whatever, you know, the mice and stuff. Yeah. Let's let's go. Um, on the other half of that, where we talked about taking those bad blocks, everyone was just like, you know, how does aftermath compare to this and aftermath compare to that? And it's like everyone hated it. There's there's always going to be a slim, you know, percentage that like whatever that people don't like. But more or less, is it's the most hated thing. At this point, I'm literally expecting an aftermath scale for sets mm. in terms of how good or bad they are. Because aftermath sits at the top it's yeah, the this was, on the aftermath scale. This is in response to Morrow uh, on Blogatog being asked once again about aftermath. Uh, specifically, there was a question asking, how does Aftermath compare to Mercadian Masks? And he responded with, it was worse. So Yeah, yeah but Mercadian Masks wasn't even atrocious it was just worse yeah. than like coming off the power level of the last two blocks right <laughs> and then prophecy happened and yeah well that yeah is- prophecy <laughs> nemesis <laughs> prophecy <laughs> nemesis were both worse than yeah. Arcadian masks oh, so. was so bad uh, but but i think here's the thing i will say for aftermath and we it kind of came up in the chat earlier but like i agree that some of the individual cards are actually good i think yeah. some of the cards are better <laughs> if we're comparing them to even like homelands or fallen empire or whatever like several of the cards are better than cards in there for sure. The problem was just the distribution of it. Like, there was just nobody needed to buy whatever five count booster packs or whatever they were. Is just, it's demoralizing. Yeah, like, it's literally demoralizing. Yeah. Like, why are we spending that? And then you open up every other pack, you're getting at least two duplicates or whatever. Right. Like, it's just, uh, nobody needs that. The the, if you, again, were a disaster. Could have awesome. sold it any other way. Could have been a complete set. Could have been like half in one color combo and the other half over here. Or, Commander decks could have been whatever. a different jumpstart thing that actually was juiced. Yeah, like I don't know, that but, could have been a thing, right? But like, I, it just wasn't. It just didn't happen for a whole variety of reasons that we've been over many, many times. Um, but that said, let's go ahead and turn the corner here to the finisher. Now WrestleMania was this past week, and my co-hosts are still in the afterglow of arguably the greatest professional wrestling event of the century. No, no hyperbole. So instead of showing us your finisher this week, I'd like to hear you cut a promo on your fellow co-host, Proven. I was built for this. I'm so happy I got to write this one. <laughs> I may be old, but I am by far the youngest of the three of us. The young buck, the greenhorn, the rook. So if these two geezers can stand up without breaking or pulling something, they better hope they don't face me in the pod. Because I'm going to relegate them to the bulk box like their modern Jun. Oh. Power drag. No hyperbole for real. Probably was the best one of the century so far. Pretty good. All right. I'm the new guy here compared to these other two. And thank Twitch I showed up because I finally got some damn new blood around this place. But if either of these 1-1 one, one human tokens try to step up, they're going to find out that I have flying. I've got haste. And why they call me the Power Dragon. <laughs> you're, you're cute, both of you. But remember, who are you talking to? I am the originator. Original, I am the originator. I am the genre. And I'm going to draw a card at the beginning of my instep because I am and always will be the monarch. Yes. It's a good gimmick. And that is. It kind of is. Gimmick. <laughs> Another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Power Dragon. 
Hey, it was good to be here. And uh, I'm, I was going to say I'm going to get some rest, but I'm still going to go edit a video, then get some rest. Unbelievable. Can't stop, won't stop. Thank you, Ruben. He's got so much. That, I mean, that's why they call him the power dragon. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Uh, we love you. And uh, come back next week. And you're great. All right. We'll move to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, Mana Traders, my co-host, Power Dragon, Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics and use code Magic Mics at CoolStuffInc.com to save 5% off. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us on our, on our exclusive member Discord, live on Twitch.tv at Magic Mike's Live or taped on our YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Magic Mike's Cast and join our TikTok at Magic Mike's Cast as well. Or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mike's. Good night, everybody.